Hello, Penguin Orts, I'm the Billy Penguin, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. I'm sorry episodes have been a little bit intermittent recently, to uh, say the least. I'm in the middle of exam period right now, so I'm only making videos as and when I can. The only reason I'm making one today is because, sort of as a rule, I don't tend to do any more revision on a day when I actually have an exam. So, uh, once I finished my exam this morning, I finished a game of Civilization V first game I've ever won on Immortal Difficulty, just saying. And then I thought I might as well make an episode of Endurance for you guys. So, what are we doing today? Well, yet again, we're expanding our infrastructure in the Solitude system. Yes, we're adding yet another module onto Artemis. So, Artemis needs one final module to finish our production chain so that we can continue producing material kits and specialised parts and start producing rockets. So, that um, module needs to enhance our chemical production so that we can then produce refined exotics and a bunch of different um, parts of our different production chains um, and that will sort of bring everything onto balance so that uh, we're getting an increasing amount of, um, of pretty much every resource that we're producing. However, before we launch that module we have to launch another mining Installation. Yes, okay, we've already launched, what, five? Five of these things? <laughs> to the surface of Nemesis, and I thought I could get away without having one to mine ore, which is why Artemis itself has got drills which mine ore. So Artemis is located in the highlands of Nemesis, where they've got high ore concentrations so that we can produce rocket fuel for the base. However, I decided we had a, quite a big chunk of uh, spare capacity on our final module, so I thought why don't we whack on a bunch of agriculture modules and make Artemis almost fully self-sufficient on supplies, because then the only thing we'd have to supply Artemis with is machinery, and that's the sort of resource that all of these various different modules use to uh, manufacture things, but you see very small amounts of it uh, every day, I think it's usually about 0.97 machinery a day or whatever, so we just have to top that up ever so uh, slightly every now and then, probably when we do the crew rotations will be uh, more than frequent enough. So, in order to start farming on the surface of another world, we obviously need to have some fertilizer and then the more important thing, we need a lot of water. Uh, water is the most important resource, obviously in producing supplies and feeding and keeping our kerbals from dying of dehydration, but water is very very heavy. Obviously it's not expensive, but in order to supply the base with water, yeah, it's just not feasible. So what we're going to be doing is mining ore on the surface of Nemesis and then using ISRUs to electrolyze that ore into um, hydrogen and oxygen uh, so we can produce rocket fuel as we have been doing already on the base, but then we're also going to be uh, just using that water for agriculture. I think something like 95% of uh, <laughs> of this ore is going to be going towards our agriculture. You see we uh, <laughs> landed that second stage there by the skin of our teeth with those parachutes. It was quite a nail-biting landing there, but we do manage to recover the first and second stages of this rocket. Uh, yeah, the Albatross 15 still remaining relatively unchanged. You guys have seen this launch many times before. I mean, we launched five of these things in a single episode once, so <laughs> yeah. We are going to do some different things um, fairly soon, but this is Essentially what this whole series has been building towards is getting this colony working, because once we get Artemis working, and trust me, a lot of this has been trial and error, I might seem to know what I'm doing, and I have watched a lot of, you know, videos on USI and read all of the in-game documentation and stuff, but a lot of it's about clear as mud, which is intentional on the mod developer's part, it's supposed to be complicated, it's not supposed to be simple to set up a, a self-sufficient colony, you know, you have to really work for it, uh, but <laughs> I'm figuring out a lot of this stuff out as I go. Uh, so as a result, I thought it's much a much better idea to get a self-sufficient colony working on Nemesis, a, <laughs> so a body that's really nearby where if you have any problems we can evacuate the crew or send up supplies, rather than try and nail it first time on another planet or, god forbid, another solar system, which is what we're going to be doing eventually. Um, so this is why I thought, you know, originally I was just going to make Artemis produce rocket parts, but we're going to have our crew up there for a long time, um, and it saves us a lot of money if we just make it self-sufficient, and it's worth figuring out this sort of thing now. But yeah, uh, Artemis, although it does have six, I believe, six stock drills on it, that doesn't produce anywhere near enough ore, uh, anywhere near the kind of quantities we're going to be using. 
for agriculture. So that's why we need this uh, final mining installation, which does kind of make that one mining, sort of that fuel module of Artemis a little bit redundant. Probably could have put the launch pad on another one and removed an entire module there, but uh, oh well, it doesn't really matter too much. So you can see here we're just landing, I think we're about 30 kilometers or so from Artemis, and uh, just heading into the highlands here is where all the ore tends to be concentrated, which I guess has uh, some sort of parallels with, with reality. You know, lunar ice is, tends to be Stored at well, mm. it tends to be stored at higher latitudes, so right in the uh, <laughs> right in polar ice caps where they don't see any sunlight uh, at any point. That's where all the ice tends to be um, concentrated. So I guess you know, in the shadow of large mountains, in some of these sort of valleys and stuff, some of them might not see sunlight particularly regularly. It might make sense that there'd be a large amount of ice here. And you see here, we almost landed, but the, yeah, the terrain is a little bit unforgiving in the highlands of uh, Nemesis especially. I think it has the highest mountain to uh, sea level ratio of any planet or body, I should say, in the entire <laughs> Archangel system. So uh, it can be a little bit difficult to land at times, but we managed to set down just fine and we get our drills working away. So now we've got our ore supply, we swap over to Artemis and we have a few things to do before we bring along our next module. Now this is going to be solved hopefully when I upgrade to uh, version 1.7 for the next series, so after episode 15 we start the next series, uh, we should have a pretty massive performance increase. But the frame rate around Artemis is starting to get a little bit painful. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going along and I'm disassembling every single redundant part on Artemis. If it's not a vital part, then it's going. If it's a redundant antenna, um, RCS ports that we use to land, and now, of course, these drills as well, we don't need them anymore, so they're going. <laughs> and I think just doing this and just removing tiny little redundant parts that we don't necessarily need anymore, we ended up removing something like um, 50 parts, and it was a noticeable increase in frame rate, so it really was worth going along and just um, destroying all of these various little parts just that we've just sort of accumulated from the different sort of things we've needed to land all the different modules um, on the surface. So there we go, we've done that and we've also produced ourselves a bunch of material kits and specialised parts which we can put towards building things in the future. So now we can actually launch that module. And I've been thinking recently um, <laughs> I've just realised how appropriate Artemis is as a name for our moon colony because if any of you don't know it's recently been announced that NASA's new moon program is called Artemis and it's such an appropriate name because Artemis is the Greek god of the moon and also sibling to Apollo which is why a lot of science fiction works have used the, no uh, used the name Artemis such as you know Andy Weir's book Artemis about uh, a moon colony and of course I think NASA obviously agree that it's appropriate because yeah their next uh, upcoming Manned missions to the moon is now, they're called the Artemis missions, which is pretty exciting. They say they're going to land people back on the moon by 2024. I I want to believe that, but I will believe it when I see it, <laughs> is all I can say. Unless that pledge is accompanied by an appropriate increase in funding, which yes, they've supposedly, they're going to get another 1.6 billion to try and get SLS back on track and everything. Whether or not that gets through Congress, who knows? Um, I'll believe it when I see it. I really hope it happens, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be more like 2025, 2026 at the absolute earliest. Anyway, so as you can see, we've now revealed our final module. It's actually quite large, but in order to get the weight down so we can actually transport it to the surface, of Nemesis, we removed most of the machinery from the different components, uh, and I didn't realize at the time that the productivity of a module in USI is actually directly tied to how much machinery is in the module. So it operates at 100% efficiency when it's full of machinery and as the machinery um, gradually drains, so does the efficiency. Um, so I thought I could just use the machinery that's currently on Artemis to power the various different modules, but uh, no, we're going to have to send up a shipment of machinery. But we can do that when we send up um, the final number of crew members and we can actually afford to hire the crew members but that will be in the next episode when we uh, send up the full crew complement to get Artemis fully operational. But let's uh, go on a little tour through the different modules of uh, this final, well I guess the different parts of this, <laughs> this final module. So first of all we've got a refinery. 
which is going to be refining minerals into chemicals because we need a lot of chemicals to get our uh, production of refined exotics which we turn into specialized parts uh, actually up and running. At the moment we're using far more chemicals than we're actually producing so that should get that right back on track. The next large module is an agriculture module so that's going to be cultivating um, supplies for us so you know all sorts of different things oxygen, um, food, I think supplies sort of pretty much includes everything. I, I do like USI in the sense that the life support resource is one resource. It's a very expensive resource to produce, but it covers everything. It's not like tack life support where you've got your oxygen, your food, uh, and all those different things, which I think if you're just playing with tack life support, that is probably a better system because it is more complicated. But with USI, where things are already fiendishly complicated, I think simplifying it down to a single resource, um, <laughs> it makes things much less of a headache. So that's going to be producing that. And then we also have a agriculture support module. And what that's going to be doing is producing the water that we're going to need for our agriculture. So the agriculture support module essentially produces all the things you need to do agriculture. You can see on the top of the module there, we've got a lot of little domes. So four of those are habitation domes. And that brings the total number of domes on Artemis up to 18 because Artemis is actually going to support 18 crew members. Originally, it was going to be, I think, 12. Um, but I realized that with the agriculture and everything, we're producing almost enough supplies to um, um, to make the base pretty much self-sufficient for 18 crew members. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Since we can make it self-sufficient on supplies for 18 crew members, that's what we're going to do. We might as well have 18 of them. So the green domes there are actually agroponics. So the agriculture module itself isn't producing quite enough supplies um, to meet our demands. But I figured out how much mulch, that's sort of the waste that the Kerbals produce, uh, how much mulch we'll be producing for 18 Kerbals. And then we put on enough of these agroponics modules that uh, we'll be recycling all of that mulch and turning it directly back into supplies. So you can produce supplies by farming them um, when you input, I think, fertilizer, which we're producing in those um, big ISRUs on the side and you put in water and I believe you put in substrate as well to farm it in but you can also produce them just by um, recycling mulch which the Kerbals produce and just putting in a bit of electricity and fertilizer. So that bring our base almost up to self-sufficiency when it comes to supplies. We also have a few inflatable modules on the sides there which should just increase uh, our habitation value of our colony. So you've probably noticed that we've landed the module a little away from the main base and that's because I'm not very happy with how Artemis looks. It's very cobbled together. There's no real order to where things are laid out. I just sort of dumped the modules close together and then connected them up and got things working. But now this is, we've got our final module here. I think it's time that we actually fully redesigned uh, how the whole base is laid out and make it look like an actual colony, like some actual thoughts gone into it and we haven't just dumped modules around and connected them with big long stretchy tubes. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the rover and we're going to start moving our modules around uh, so that we can actually make the base look a little better than us. Probably wasn't, you know, vital for, <laughs> for any reason, but I think having the base look better and be more well organized, um, well, you know, it brings me, it gives me a lot of pleasure. Uh, I did get a little bit OCD with this, with making sure that all of the modules were at sort of 90 degrees to each other and making sure it all lined up. Uh, so I have cut out a lot of this. You can see we're just lining up the rover here, uh, connecting it up with that connecty tube, which is supposedly like expandable tubes. So I don't know quite how uh, it's <laughs> taking the strain of a rover dragging a, an entire module across the surface, but I'm not going to question KSP physics. It's, uh, it's helping me out, so uh, I'm not going to think too hard about it. But yeah, this took quite a long time. Um, the only reason we can do this is actually because those large B9 landing legs that you see there, they don't really have any grip. Uh, which is why our modules slide all over the place until we engage ground tether, which is uh, a function of USI, which allows you to sort of cement modules to the ground once they touch the ground so they don't slide all over the place. Um, but that does mean that we can drag the modules around, uh, which is very helpful. So we can use that rover and position all of our modules around um, this central module now. So this is actually probably the largest module that we've landed, and the only reason it is so light is because it makes use of inflatable modules, as you see there on the side, uh, which will inflate in a minute once we've connected up the... Uh, um, main reactor because we don't actually have any electric charge on this right now. 
Um, and also by draining all the machinery, um, which just about made this light enough to land it on Nemesis. But you can see here we're just destroying the engine and all the LCS ports and everything. These are parts we used to land it, but now this is here, we're never going to move it again. So there is no point in having all these parts. We might as well uh, try and improve performance a little bit. Of course, in reality, you wouldn't go around destroying every single redundant <laughs> part you have. Uh, I think we only have a single antenna on Artemis now. Um, <laughs> obviously it wouldn't be a wise idea in reality, but in reality you don't have frame rate, so <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Anyway, in Kerbal Space Program, things don't tend to break. I did have a mod which made things break randomly um, for I believe the first half of this series, maybe not even that. Um, but I forgot to put the probability of things breaking high enough that it ever actually happened and then I thought about it and thought do I actually want a mission that I've you know put countless hours into you know um, <laughs> into making sure it works and everything just to have random number generator just flip the middle finger and make it fail you know I, I thought nah uh, I'd rather I'd rather have things fail and have problems develop more naturally than that. Um, so it's more it's kind of exciting to have launch failures and things, but for this kind of series I didn't think it was entirely necessary. Uh, so in the end I did remove that mod. And you can see here we're just connecting up our launching and uh, fuel module, although it's not it doesn't really produce fuel anymore, does it? It has well I guess the ISIU still produces fuel. Um, that giant USI ISIU there. Um, but it doesn't mine ore anymore now. The ore is going into the planetary stockpile from that mining installation and then our logistics module uh, is taking that out of the planetary stockpile and then uh, putting it into that ISIU so we can produce fuel from it and now we can also produce water in that agriculture module. Of course to get all of this operational we actually need a number of different Kerbals. We only have a quartermaster for the logistics and five engineers on the base right now. Uh, in order to get the agriculture modules working you need to have a biologist um, and in order to get more advanced agriculture modules which we don't have on here yet um, but to get them working you need to have a farmer. And I think in future we will add one more module to Artemis to actually make it fully self-sufficient because um, if we add one more module that combines material kits and specialized parts we can actually produce machinery on Artemis, which means we don't have to resupply Artemis with any machinery or anything at all. Um, and then we could probably also put another um, part onto that final module um, called a med bay or perhaps something that produces colony supplies or colonization module. And what that does is it freezes the habitation timers of the Kerbals so they can stay here indefinitely. And that means we'd never have to rotate the crew, we'd never have to supply it with anything, it would be completely self-sufficient. Um, but we don't need to do that for a while yet. I mean, with this agriculture module, um, it's self-sufficient on supplies, so these Kerbals can be up here, I believe it's, once we have the full roster, uh, they'll be up here for about a year and a half, um, maybe just shy of two years. Um, but just the main limiting factor is the habitation time. Um, but yeah, I think we'll rotate the crew, and it's not particularly difficult to rotate the crew either, because uh, <laughs> we need to send shipments of, um, of exotic minerals back now and then anyway, so you might as well just recycle the crew uh, when we do that. But uh, yeah, we will probably in the next series make this fully self-sufficient just to see how that works, just to, as I said, have a blueprint for when we make colonies in the future, um, because all of this has been a fair bit of trial and error, as I said, a bit of documentation, a bit of trial and error, but it's finally all working. So all we need to do now is send up um, the final 12 crew members. So that's going to consist of a biologist and a number of engineers to get our productivity up so we can produce rockets and uh, we can actually get Artemis fully operational. But that will be in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I've been the Billy Penguin and I will see you all next time.